Yeah, that's a straight piped Prius. And most people don't buy a Prius to straight pipe it, unless you're a weirdo. But did you know that thieves, they'll do it for free. Heck, they'll straight pipe pretty much any car out there for free because there's a part of your car that's worth literally more than gold. Don't believe me? Just look at how many catalytic converters are being stolen every single day. That's right, in recent years, criminals have been stealing more and more catalytic converters off the bottom of unsuspecting cars. And while your cat may be rusted over and covered in motor oil, as my mom says, it's what's on the inside that counts. And it's hiding some pretty valuable stuff that jackers can't wait to get their dirty little hands on. And definitely watch till the end, cause I'm gonna tell you exactly how to foil their evil plants. And if you're new here, I'm Brad Danger. This is Ideal, please subscribe and turn on that notification bell. Cause we got new content coming at you pretty much every single day. Now, it's time to let the cat out of the bag about catalytic converters. So buckle up and let's go. So first let's talk about what a catalytic converter is and what it even does. You see, catalytic converters are basically a part of your exhaust system that's put in place to change harmful exhaust gases into less harmful products. They take all that carbon monoxide, nitric oxide, nitrogen dioxide, and hydrocarbons and force it to react with precious metals, converting it into less harmful products like carbon dioxide and water vapor. Cats though also have to be extremely hot to be functional, like 400 degrees Fahrenheit hot. So they were typically placed as close to the engine as possible at first. This ended up causing some problems, however, and the cat gradually made it further and further down the exhaust system over the years. And today, they usually sit right near your tailpipe. And because of that, it's made it increasingly easier for thieves to quickly slip onto your car and pull your cat out in the blink of an eye. Yeah, a lot of times it takes less than a minute. So how do catalytic converters actually work? All right, well, it's time to call upon Brad Danger, doctor of engineering for this one. Whoa, uh, this is more of a robe than a lab coat. <laughs> Just kidding, I'm not gonna deep dive into how catalytic converters work. And the main reason is because this is some complicated machinery. The basic way that catalytic converters work is by trapping these harmful gases in a honeycomb structure. Think of it like a beehive. And these harmful gases are contained in there and under the extreme heat, they react with the PGMs that live inside of that honeycomb. Now, I know all you guys are wondering, what is PGM? Well, it stands for platinum group metals. And this is a group of precious metals that have a certain chemical property that allow them to trade hydrogens or carbons or whatever with these dangerous gases and convert them into less harmful products. <sighs> I am not a chemist. In fact, I never did well in chemistry. But what I do know is that PGMs do their job and they do it very well. And so older gas burning cars typically have a simple two-way oxidation cat, which essentially converts carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide. And it converts hydrocarbons, which are basically particles of unburnt fuel to water vapor. So now you know why water comes out of the exhaust when you fire it up sometimes. But more modern cars have three-way cats, which do everything that the two-way cat does, except it does one extra thing, because it also removes nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide, which are also harmful pollutants. Diesel burning cars and trucks like Tina, which is our Jeep Wrangler, who has a three liter eco diesel and is so much fun to drive. Well, diesel vehicles also have their own kind of catalytic converter that's specially equipped to deal with compression ignition diesel engines. EVs, on the other hand, <laughs> they don't use catalytic converters whatsoever. And what a surprise, because they don't create any emissions, except they do create a ton of emissions when they're being built, but that's another story for another day. So if you're already considering a Tesla, well, I just gave you one more reason to get one. And if you're enjoying this video so far, please smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm, and it lets us know to make more content like this. And while that may have been a slightly boring explanation if you're not very technologically inclined like myself, it's worth looking into why theft rates for catalytic converters are going sky high these days. And if your ears perked up when I said precious metals? Well, you're already one step ahead of me. Because first of all, people have been stealing catalytic converters since the technology was first invented. This is not a new thing. And that's because the PGM precious metals that make them work are super valuable. You see the three main PGMs found in the cats are platinum, rhodium, and palladium. Now, I see some of you going and getting your periodic tables to look them up, but well, you don't have to. Because while you probably have already heard of platinum and associated it with big money, 
it's actually the least valuable of the three. And while these metals have always been used in catalytic converters, their values have absolutely skyrocketed in recent years, making it all that more lucrative for somebody to pull that cat. Well, not the one with nine lives, but the one under your car. And there's been reports of people stealing cats from mechanic shops, from dealerships, and even off school buses. Okay, I do have to say though, <laughs> straight piped school buses don't sound all that bad. Now kids can get to school in style. Just kidding, but it does definitely sound kind of good. Obviously though, thieves are going to pretty extreme lengths to get their hands on these things. But as the title of this video claims, well, your catalytic converter could actually be more valuable than gold. And could that possibly be true? Well, let's take a look. Now we had to do some mining or digging because according to a metal speculation group out of Montreal called Kitco Metals, by the end of the year 2021, the price of an ounce of palladium may be somewhere around $2,400. The price of platinum, on the other hand, has been roughly around $1,200 an ounce. And the price of rhodium, get this, you guys, was around $23,700 per ounce in February of 2020. And do you know how much gold is worth per ounce right now? Well, it's roughly $1,700 per ounce so far this year, which means that palladium and rhodium are both in fact more valuable than gold at this point in time. But as I said, it wasn't always like that. The values of these PGMs have completely exploded in the last few years. And the reason why might actually surprise you. Now it's time to bring in Brad Danger, PhD of economics. Man, I am just a renaissance man today, and I really don't know why I'm wearing these sunglasses. But it seems pretty absurd that these metals that are used in pretty much every car are so valuable. And that begs the question of why did these prices go up so far? Well, in fact, the primary use of these metals is in catalytic converters. So much so that 90% of rhodium demand was for cats in 2019. And with emission standards becoming more and more strict worldwide, and particularly in the massive economy of China, the demand for these PGMs was shot through the roof. Palladium and rhodium in particular have shot up in value since they're the most widely used in gas burning cars. Whereas platinum hasn't blown up as much because it's more used in diesel vehicles like Tina. And huh, I do have to admit that people are kind of skeptical about diesel vehicles after the whole Volkswagen Dieselgate situation. And the fact that the global supply of palladium and rhodium also remains low because these metals are mined mostly in Russia and South Africa. And they're mostly collected as a byproduct by mining operations who are looking primarily for other metals. High demand, low supply. You know what that means, high prices. All right, economic lesson over. Now that you know that pretty much every thief under the sun wants to steal your catalytic converter, let's talk about how you make sure that they don't get their dirty little hands on yours. Now here's the unfortunate part. It seems that removing catalytic converters is pretty quick and easy for anyone that knows how to use a Sawzall, which begs the question, why would auto manufacturers make such a valuable component so easy to remove? You know, maybe it's time for our favorite car makers to go back to the drawing board on this one. For now though, the best way to protect your catalytic converter from getting snatched up and sold is to park in a garage. And if you can't, make sure your car is parked in a well-lit area. You can also calibrate your shock sensor on your car's alarm to make it go off with just mild vibrations. There's usually a dial under your dashboard on the driver's side, and if you turn it clockwise, it'll turn up the sensitivity. And while yes, this may help expose potential thieves, it'll probably also have you running out of your school or office building to turn off your car alarm more than you would like. So another option is to weld your catalytic converter to the frame of your car. I've seen some DIY guys out there making cages out of the rebar and it protects their converter unit. And there's also some pre-made cages that you can buy online for the same exact purpose. And with all that said, a determined thief will probably sawzall through all of that nonsense. But if you make him take more time to do it, well then he might think twice about stealing yours. Because let's be honest, when he has a power saw in the middle of a street, he'll probably just move on to another vehicle. And also apparently it's 
far easier to steal one from a vehicle that has been lifted. So you stance boys might actually be onto something for once. I'm just kidding, I like stance, but this might be the only practical time in all of history that slamming your car makes sense. I never thought I'd say that. And if you wanna get your catalytic converter back after it's been stolen, there are third party companies out there that will etch your VIN into your converter so that, you know, salvage shops can identify it, if they're upstanding that is. However, it is very questionable whether that VIN will really do anything anyway. And that's because putting a used cat on your car is actually illegal. And the only salvage shops that are going to buy them are the ones that don't have any regard for the Law. Either that or they're just gonna melt it down and get those precious PGMs inside. In which case that VIN is completely useless anyways. The other option though is to just install a dash cam, which would help the cops identify the suspect. And honestly, that's probably what I would go with. Just because you can buy one for as little as 50 bucks and they can help with all types of theft, insurance claims, and can be used for getting badass footage of your weekend off-roading extravaganza. So we threw a link to one of our favorite dash cams in the description below, go check it out. And the last and most expensive way to not get your cat stolen just buy an electric vehicle. Can't steal your cat if you don't have one. Well, there you have it, you guys. Now, if you wake up one day and your car is now straight piped and you didn't schedule an appointment and you didn't pay anything for it, well, now you know why. And my question to you, has anyone out there ever had their cat stolen? Let us know down below. Also, if you're new here, please subscribe and turn on that notification bell. And if you enjoyed the video, please like this video. I'm Brad Danger, this is Ideal, and keep living the ideal lifestyle.